Hi, I'm Karen Slobod, and I'm going to take you on a tour of trends in design and urban planning that are revitalizing cities in Europe and the United States. Let's check out Austin. Austin was the fastest growing large city in the U.S. in 2019. Famous for South by Southwest and the music scene, Austin has seen growth because of the tech industry and affordability because the coasts are getting so expensive. The city of Austin also did a very cool thing. When they moved their airport further outside of town, they created a vast open space in the center of Austin, and they decided to plug in a slew of new smart planning features. The Mueller Market District is a mixed-use development with homes, shops, eateries, offices, green space, a 30-acre park with a lake, jogging trails, and an open-air amphitheater. The park hosts a farmer's market and a food truck court. The signage and architecture in the Mueller district is well thought out. This supermarket literally has a cool design as the shade structure on top helps in the summer months. The district has a number of sustainable features, including bioswales and complete streets. There's an innovative children's museum in the center called the Thinkery. There's also a performing arts center in the neighborhood and a film studio. Mueller also has a number of vertical mixed-use apartment buildings. These have shops, eateries, and services on the ground floor and housing or offices above. This combination is a really powerful urban planning tool and I'll talk more about it in a little bit. Speaking of housing, Austin has done a really unusual and remarkable thing. They've created an area called Community First Village, which is a 51 acre development that provides affordable housing for folks coming out of homelessness. The development has a number of community amenities, including five outdoor kitchens, a community cinema, a market, an organic farm, a family health resource center, walking trails, and woodworking shop. Some of the homes are created with 3D printing. Like Austin, Berlin is super popular now. It's surpassed Paris as the most visited tourist destination in Europe. When the Berlin Wall came down in 1987, the demarcation zone land between the east and the west was opened up, and it wasn't empty. It was filled with old brick warehouses, railroad tracks, and now it was accessible and nobody owned it. So artists moved in, claimed it, and created some very interesting hybrid spaces. The largest of these is Raw Friedrichshain. The 12 acres have been adaptively reused as artist studios, galleries, a performance stage, skate park, swimming pool, outdoor cinema, cafe, and a climbing gym with an outdoor tower. When I was there a few years ago, we walked into the shell of a brick building in the evening, and there was a guy in top hat and tails spinning LPs from the 20s, and folks were jitterbugging. These kind of spaces that are hybrid activity and cultural centers are springing up all over the place, and they are transforming life in a lot of these really popular cities. In some ways, they are replacing fashion malls as a cultural destination, because if you don't know what you want to do, you can just head towards a cultural hub and you can find something of interest and some food to eat. The city of Berlin feels like a hive of activity. Besides the cultural hubs, some of that energy comes from the street life. The streets are filled with trams, buses, bikes, and folks walking on the wide sidewalks. The multimodal street design is called complete streets. Another reason for Berlin's hive energy is this very interesting thing that the German government did. Germany put very high tariff rates on imported goods, which has the effect that of having Germans buy less generally and shop local. Many of the city streets in Berlin have very small shop spaces on their ground floor, which allows cottage industry to take a chance and create a product line of maybe 
only 30 or 40 products for a season and see how well that sells. These are called micro shop spaces or pop-ups. The German economy has grown in part because of the support of cottage industries and micro shop spaces. This combination also creates unique neighborhoods with a lot of character. Another city with a flourishing business model is Playa Vista. Also known as Silicon Beach, it's a sister city to Silicon Valley in California. Created with the latest in urban planning tools, it's home to a number of tech campuses. There are walkable, complete streets, pocket parks, plazas, and shade structures. There's water-wise landscaping. There are paths and public space for sports, dog parks, outdoor performance space, nature areas, and gyms, movie theater, grocery store, services, etc high concept architectural design, green walls, and co-working sites are also in the space. YouTube and Google have tech campuses here. Cowork facilities offer professional workspace for startups and office amenities plus culture. Both tech campuses and co-working spaces amp up the fun factor. The idea is if you want to attract talent and creativity, then having a space that doesn't feel like a great cubicle, but instead is comfortable, bright, fun, and unique, you will attract talent and keep it. Often tech spaces are essentially warehouses that have been divided up in really cool ways. Instead of cubicles, flexible, discrete workspaces. Bright accent colors and cool materials. Amenities like game rooms and hangout spaces. This is a WeWork space. WeWork has been very successful in creating co-working environments. WeWork also helps other companies create their interior office space. They create a hipster vibe by adding mid-century textiles and furniture. Speaking of mid-century design, let's go to Copenhagen. Intellectual property like design has always been a driver for the Danish economy because they don't have extraction industries like timber and oil. So the Danes decided to invest in people themselves as the natural resource they wanted to develop. There are a high number of universities in Copenhagen and a high number of startups. Like Danish furniture, the city of Copenhagen itself is well thought out and very functional. Transportation is multimodal and lots of Danes get around on bikes. This elevated bikeway is called the Bike Snake. It's got great design and I can tell you it feels a bit like flying to ride on it. Not only are Copenhagen's bikeways a great form of transportation, they're also a tourist attraction. Another amenity that's popular with both locals and folks who are visiting is Torvalhallen. The European open market 
was reimagined to flourish in all seasons. With the popularity of farmer's markets and the local food movement, market halls are springing up everywhere. Tarpenhallern is probably my favorite. I love the design, the graphics for each of the booths, the layout. It's a really well-conceived boot hall. There are actually three buildings now because this was such a popular venue, they expanded. One of them has children's toys and the other two are for dining. Market halls are like pop-up spaces for food vendors. The indoor greenhouse-like space allows vendors to sell year-round. Here are a few examples of some other market halls. In the San Francisco Bay Area, Japan, and New Orleans. Portland is another city known for its food. It's another hot town that everyone is moving to. Portland has a great bike culture and focus on sustainability. Here's a bar that's also a bike shop. And of course, Portland has complete streets where bikes, pedestrians, trams, and cars all have a place on the road. Here's another road feature. It's a swale to catch rainwater. Speaking of streets, Portland's Alberta Street won the Great American Main Street Award in 2019. Known as a vibrant working class and commercial district in the 1950s, Alberta suffered from the decades of disinvestment and exclusionary lending practices and became an area of high crime. Through community activism and the support of the city, Alberta Street is now flourishing again. Some of the urban planning tools that help revitalize the street include creating pocket parks and seating on the street, allowing food trucks to set up semi-permanent food courts on the vacant lots, allowing restaurants and businesses to open up without requisite parking. Rather than changing the zoning, they chose just not to enforce the parking requirements. Funding for murals and artifying the neighborhood. The city gave permission to a developer to create a tiny house community on one of the corners. All of these interventions have brought the street back to life. The city offers matching grants to property owners and businesses. 23% of businesses are minority owned and 60% are women owned. The one downside is that what was a working class neighborhood is now not as affordable. Portland planners know that housing is an issue and they're addressing it by zoning for tons of vertical mixed use. There's some really inventive architecture and cladding. My favorite building is One North by Holst. The balance of the articulation is fabulous, and it actually feels like it's reaching out to give you a hug. Like many other cities, Portland is using vertical mixed-use development to create walkable, lively streets like in Europe. Portland has one other great advantage. In the early days when the cable cars were running through the city, the zoning of the day allowed for businesses and shops to be located near each cable car stop. This creates a grid of 
small cultural hubs throughout the city. That early zoning means that each neighborhood has an active center. Including a love of the bike and multimodal transportation. With the city's rich history, there are many examples of adaptive reuse using historic buildings for new purposes. The Lloyd's Hotel is a great example. The building was once a prison. Now it's a cultural arts center and the inclusive hotel philosophy offers rooms from one to five stars. A number of designers and artists designed the unique rooms. The hotel hosts cultural art events. The eclectic mix of historic and contemporary design, along with the cultural hub aspect of the hotel, makes it feel exciting to be there. The hotel is a combination of four trends. The hybrid mix, cultural hubs, adaptive reuse, and an egalitarian philosophy. Here are a few more examples of adaptive reuse, which gives new life to older buildings and preserves the special character of cities. We've taken a look at some of the trends that are revitalizing cities and neighborhoods. Combining complete streets and vertical mixed use are the two most powerful tools because they create instant walkable neighborhoods and correct some of the zoning issues from the past. Adding cultural hubs, adaptive reuse, micro shops, inventive workspace options, affordable housing, and great design are all a recipe for creating a thriving community. This diagram can be downloaded at Articulture Design Farm. At the website, there are also tours of smart subdivision design and shop and eatery design trends. Thanks for joining me on this tour. Hope to meet you on the street.